Welcome back to the WatchGage YouTube channel, everyone. This is John Keel from WatchGage. Gary Gridvanis from IW Magazine. So just a quick note that I wanted to mention, we're doing this uh, you know, one or two videos a week talking about what's going on in the watch industry, uh, different brands, things like that. Uh, what's interesting is we're gonna host it on the WatchGage YouTube channel and either the entire videos or snippets of the videos will be embedded in articles on IW Magazine's website. So if you actually want to read the articles, uh, jump over to IWMagazine.com, check out the article, uh, either the entire video or snippets will be embedded. But in addition to that, if you sign up for the newsletter, uh, you're going to get a ton of other watch-related information. Correct, Gary? Some of which we'll be covering today and uh, some of which we won't. But uh, each week you'll get a review of what we get into our inboxes and what we see in real life news, events, and just a ton of new watches. Very, very cool stuff. You get dozens of uh, press releases every day. Um, Too many to cover. <laughs> so you pick some great ones, you put them on the website, and we're going to we're gonna, you know, bounce through a few today, talk about what's going on. The first one we're going to do is Frank Mueller. Well, yeah, so Frank Mueller runs their own event concurrent with the Watches and Wonders event in Geneva, previously known as the SIHH, which started in 1991. It's worth noting that in those early days, Frank Miller actually exhibited at the SIHH until it grew to the point where it established its own facility, which, so, as I've mentioned before, is amazing. So Frank, Frank Miller's facilities are in Geneva? They're in the uh, outskirts of right Geneva, above the lake, in a little town called Gento, um, and they is have... It, is it Frank Mueller land? Was that what uh, they called watch it? Lands. Watch, watch, watch land. Watch land. That's a been a long time since yeah. I... Yeah, so and I think Frank Miller is one of those underappreciated brands. It reached its zenith... Um, Pretty quickly, it came up with its own shape, and it really was an exciting brand that capitalized on the return of the mechanical watch. And they've continued to reinvest and grow. If you have an opportunity, if you're a high-end collector or just a watch enthusiast, to go to Watchland, it's amazing what they do on site, from gem setting to movement manufacturing, uh, dials, hands, the whole nine yards. They experiment with materials and it's just the facility is amazing. I highly recommend it. And they run their own event called Watchland uh, during the SI of Watches and Wonders. Sorry, <laughs> that's how old I am. Our old school minds go right to Basel World and <laughs> SIH. Exactly. And uh, they came out with some new watches this year. And the first one is their central tourbillon that we see here. Now, love it or hate it, you're taking a cool engineering and amazing central tourbillon uh, which you can see the hour and the minute hands run along the periphery. And they add a little fun and a little splash of color. This is for someone who likes the mechanics and the engineering, but also wants a little splash of color in a few different colorways you right. see here. Well, you know, for those of you looking, I don't know if you can see here, the hour hand is right here, and the minute hand is right there. It took me a moment. I well, and, it out. and as you know, anyone who knows watches, that's the big challenge because normally the hands radiate from the center, the Correct. cannon pinion, where you have the hands reaching out. So if you have the, in t putting the tourbillon in the middle is not the biggest challenge. Okay, you can put that tourbillon anywhere. Audemars Piguet came out with the first tourbillon on a wristwatch, and it was actually up at 11 o'clock. Right. So you can put it wherever you want, but how do you read the time? So right. the system that shows the hours and minutes was also a big challenge here. But the fun part about using a central tourbillon is the seconds hand can be attached directly to the tourbillon because right. it's a one minute rotation. Right, very cool. So they added color to a watch that they've been doing and changed it up a little bit. I dig it, that one's super funky. Uh, it's gonna be a certain buyer for that watch. You're gonna have to like the mechanics and like the playfulness. Well, I'm thinking Miami. <laughs> Before you get there, you have to be able to want to pay $130,000 for a wristwatch. Uh, but once you get to the 130000 mark, then yes, you have to add into the <laughs> Exactly. If you're in the, swimming in those waters, you're probably <laughs> in Miami or the Cote d'Azur or yeah. Monte Carlo. But so, the next one yeah. coming up. So this is, this is the one that both of us kind of just stopped on a dime when we're scrolling through. And uh, the Gigaturb. So the Gigaturbion, that's, it's not a new... Um, Gee, they've done the Giga Turbion before. Right, so the Giga Turbion takes the record as the largest Turbion. It has a 20 millimeter balance wheel. Which is. So the balance wheel that ticks back and forth, here. you see with the screws on it. That's actually the cage. So the balance wheel is the screwed balance here. So it's a 20 millimeter, which is enormous. Um, and 
because it's so big, they played with materials, titanium and um, other materials, to allow for a better running and a longer power reserve. So way up in the top there, you have a power reserve indicator. Just below that on the, on the periphery, on the sides, I thought it was a two barrels. You corrected me. Well, so there were two barrels each mount, uh, mounted on top of one another. So there's actually four barrels. It's a manual wind wristwatch with a nine-day power reserve. Which is absurd. Well, and a lot of people may or may not know that the challenge with a long power reserve is keeping a consistent power flow right. so you keep accuracy. Right. I think I've probably mentioned this before, but it's kind of oxymoronic. As a watch loses power, they typically get faster which seems the opposite, less power, slower, but it's because the balance wheel doesn't have the same it doesn't travel amplitude. Far. It doesn't, yeah, right. it loses amplitude, which makes it go a little bit quicker, and you see that. A lot of watches will have stop mechanisms at a certain point, a Maltese cross or other, to make sure that it stays within the preferred power range. Right. So right. making a nine-day watch with that kind of tourbillon. Super funky. Just an amazing. That's a great looking watch. I don't want to guess what that thing is selling for. Yeah, we don't show it here, but that's <laughs> upon request. Okay, this, this one I also stopped in. in this is your harpy. favorite right this away. This is <clears throat> just aesthetically. I mean, I've always been a big fan of the Curvex. Um, and, and I think from a standpoint of aesthetics of the, the combination of the rose gold, the silver, that beautiful guilloche dial, the applied numerals uh, and and the blue is just to me a stunning, stunning execution of, you know, of a watch you've seen many different versions of. Well, I think there's also what Frank Muller does here with the stressed out numerals or stretch numerals. You've got kind of a, a modern twist with those numerals, gives it a more modern feel. But the guilloche in the background is a very traditional, yeah. And the colorway is just exquisite. The rose gold with the uh, the blue and the the cabochon on the crown. And what's interesting here is that these are now in ladies' sizes in uh, 30 and 33 millimeters. So now, so with the Curve X, when you're talking about the sizes, obviously, yeah, it's going to be much different than if it was a round watch, right? So a 33 millimeter round is going to appear much different than a 33. So in the 33, yes. let's say, a 33 millimeter, you're talking from uh, east to west of the case, from side Correct. to side. yes. And then the lug to lug is something completely different. Correct. The lug to lug is yep. going to be different, um, of course, and uh, it's still going to be a much more feminine. And the Curve X, the way it shapes and fits your wrist, makes even it the full rolls, size rolls uh, right version very comfortable. But in the lady size and the fact that uh, the colorway here, this is just another beautiful colorway. They'll put diamonds on this execution as well. For ladies. For men too. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. But I mean for the more, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, I remember from my days of actually selling Frank Mueller in a retail store that, you know, almost every Curvex they sold, they had like five sizes of the same exact watch. Yes. You know what I mean? So you, you know, it, you can get it to almost fit any size wrist or, you know, whatever your taste may be. Mm -hmm. And then this one, this one was a bit polarizing when we scrolled through. Not John's favorite. <laughs> so Gary's like, oh, you got to see the next one. And I scrolled down and I was like, Ugh. you know, so for me, I think, I think my first initial reaction is Movado 1992, 93, 94, which obviously was a huge success for Movado, but just that, that very super sleek, modern I don't even know. I, well, know. this is a less is more execution, but yeah. the idea here with the piano lacquer dial, this is someone who doesn't want the ostentation. I that appeals to my eye. Yeah. I, I I like this watch. So it comes down to particular. personal taste, and and the truth of the matter is, I'm sure it's beautiful. Um, it just it's just not my style. Let's say. Well, and that's the beautiful thing with any watch, you know, and which is why I always have a challenge with the content that I put in the magazine. I've mentioned it again, that. I might not like something, but I want to put it out there because someone else might. If, if, if anybody has watched every video on Watch Gauge, everyone, they hear me say that probably a hundred times since I started the channel, where, listen, I, I think part of the joy of being a fan of wristwatches and being around other wristwatch people is that you could love something and I hate it and vice versa. One of my very best friends, I've said this a bunch of times, one of my very best friends has a collection that is worth more than my house times three. However, I hate every one of the watches. Now, as a piece of <laughs> art and as a piece of mechanical, amazing, just what's put into them, I, I appreciate that. And that's the kind of thing I would love to have just to look at, but I wouldn't put on my wrist. 
where it's and but we laugh about it, right? Like we have a good time because you know, somebody's style is way different than somebody else's. Well, and that's what a watch has become. It's not about telling time anymore. It's about your personal right. accessory. It's about what you want to show off as your yeah. I think I told you this. Style. You know, the, the ProTech, we started selling on WatchGate just in that's the last right. week. And I, but, but, but the thing is, is I, I mean, this is a $450 watch that I haven't taken off my wrist. I love this thing, but it comes down to style. But this is my, you know... I like being outdoors. I like, you know, I like surfing and fishing and, you know, being in the woods and things like that. I drive a pickup truck and this fits my personality. Look, Barry Cohen, founder of Luminox and now founder of ProTech, made an awesome watch here. It's yeah. a great, you know. It's uh, just, but, but that's the point. The point of what you were getting at is that, you know, a, a wristwatch is sort of an extension of your style, your, you know, your expression. And uh, that's part well, of the fun. It, once you've achieved that point, I think that a lot of people are sheep. A lot of people want to put a Rolex on their wrist because other people, they want to impress other people. Yeah, we're going to get hate well, for that comment. But, one, yeah, well, but it's true. And, I, no, listen, but, I get it. Uh, you know, and I think that once you get past that, trying to impress others, and you really get to the point with what do I like, that's when you've matriculated into, and you can really expand your own horizon without following. Yeah, well, I mean, the one, the crowd. One, one one thing that I've always said while selling watches, particularly when it was in, you know, brick and mortar retail, when I'm standing in front of a customer, talking about you know what they may want to buy. To me, I'd always say I don't. It could be the most expensive, least expensive, the best, or the worst watch in the world. The point of the matter with a wristwatch, for, in my opinion, is that you're going to look at it how many times a day. Do you enjoy what you're looking at? Yep. Do you, are you looking and seeing things that are making you feel? A are certain you going to wear it, or is it going to sit in the drawer, or sit? Yeah, in a case? And, and you know, and look, that does that isn't to say somebody's going to look at a submarine and not love it. It's just it depends on your reasoning behind it as well. So, all right, let's. I, I think Frank Mueller, well done for the most part, in my opinion. Uh, and, and again. This thing might be absolutely gorgeous in person, just style-wise, not Come on, mine. You see someone wearing a tuxedo at a black tie event, Listen, pulling that, rocking that watch. I've worn a suit twice in seven years. Hey, so. fair, enough, fair enough. Well, let's go on to, right, let's let's go on to, on to another to, polarizing watch for John and I. I. Well, this watch itself is not polarizing for me. It's, it's, it's a detail of the watch, but why don't you tell the fine folks? Well, first of all, in my opinion, there's kind of an odd tension in this design. You have a 30 atmosphere diver watch that you're putting bling onto. Yeah. Fair enough. No one's diving That's with fine. their watches anyway. So yeah. it's diver is more of a, a design cue than it is a functional tool. Um, and uh, like another brand, Tag Heuer recently launched a watch line with lab grown diamonds. And this Oris is using lab grown diamonds. Now, for those of you that don't know, in watchmaking, unlike jewelry, most of the diamonds they use are VVS1, like amazing investment grade diamonds. DEF -D color and v -V Top Russell tin is another term they love to use. Basically, basically as close to flawless as you right. can get. And it drives the price through the roof. Right. Now, in this case, you can go to Cubic Zirconia or Swarovski Crystals, which a lot of brands do. But Oris went a different route, as did Tag Heuer, as I mentioned recently. And these are lab-grown diamonds. And I'm an advocate of it more so than John. Tell me why, well, John. So my, my, my feeling is, why not use CZs or, or, um, or even Swarovski crystals and cut the price even further, right? Like, and your contention is, well, you can get these top quality diamonds for a lower price in the watch. Um, I, I, I'm not polarized. I'm not, I don't know. I'm not, well, it's chemically identical. Yeah. It's just not mined out of the ground. Okay, yeah. so which which you brought up a good point that did make me see the light a little is that there's completely conflict free diamonds. Well, no yes, you, you, you take it. that equation off the right. table. You know, right. uh, Chopard and other brands have pledged to use conflict free sure. diamonds because of the way they're mined and the child labor and the brutal conditions. This takes that off the table. You get the same glimmer, dance of light, color, everything, uh, scratch resistance. It's a real diamond. So um, be curious to hear what other people I'm, feel I'm not, on the I'm topic. I'm not super against it. I just you know, well, gee, I mean, this is what, $5,300, I believe, 55 well, So that's the point. Now, so if that was real diamonds. It'd be $11,000 watch. 11000 12000 I would say, at least, yeah. on steel. And, but that's, so that kind of furthers my question is, if they were CZs or Swarovski crystals, I would say Swarovski. I don't think they'd use CZs, which are actually fake. Would that bring the watch down to 3000 I don't know. <sighs> yeah, and I then, mean. But look, you know, at the end of the day, Oris, 
you know, great job because here we are talking about it, which I'm sure a lot of other people are. And I think it's a great watch. I mean, I can totally see a woman throwing that into her uh, collection of watches that she throws on because it's sporty. It's it's got the diamonds. It's fun. It's whatever. I'm just cu- I'm just con- I don't know. I'm just the well, the lab, full, lab-grown thing. Just to me, I'm you know full credit to Oris for playing outside the box. Look, you, you, they've got their Which, they've got their baseline. They've got their own in-house movements. They've got their you know big crown. They had the altimeter tool watch. So to they went with Kermit. On one watch, yeah. they're coming out yeah, with listen, a... I'm a... Yeah, listen, I mean, we're both huge fans of Oris. That's, that goes I, I without question. My first mechanical yeah. Swiss watch. Yeah. All right, this next one is uh, I consider to be bananas. Um, I love this watch. Um, yeah. This is from our good friend Jason Wilbur out in California, who is a, a design madman, this guy. Yeah, Jay is the guy and, who designed... And one of the nicest, nicest guys you'll ever meet. Yes, he is. He has a history in design. Uh, he did the Devon Tread 1, yeah. which uh, was just a complete uh, retake on what a watch can be using belts uh, and pulleys to right. display the time. But uh, he's also come out with another watch called the Launch Watch in the EXP, which we're not going to talk about here. Nope, this is Still the architectural and very cool designs, but this is his Neck Plus Ultra. This is his, uh, it's an amazing thing to look at. So, you so tell- we're going we're gonna to go to the video here, um, but the, the, thing, the thing to think about is how this thing tells time, and it is completely, in my opinion, revolutionary. So two discs with... Uh, you know, what look like (laughs) hieroglyphics hieroglyphics or, you know, they look like nothing on their own. The the transparent sapphire disc on the right and the colored one on the left, the sapphire overlays the black. And as you see it happening, the numerals come together to make very clear numerals to read the hour in the middle. And, you know, Jason told me that coming up with those designs that would actually work together and create the numerals took weeks of experimentation and then refinement and getting it right. It's an amazing complication. I actually saw a preview of this a couple of years back when he showed me it was housed in a different case and we spoke about it. And believe it or not, I I may have a tiny bit of uh, input on this one that he went to a round case instead of a very, I'll just say different. I don't want to, he may use that for something else later. But he took the same mechanism inside, which I thought at the time was amazing. And I said, you can't make this. I I thought it was just a design exercise. But here it is in real life. And if this came from Max Booser, you wouldn't be surprised. No, if this came yeah. from or work, or, or work, you'd say, wow. But, but from an independent guy in California, United States of America, I think this is outrageous. Well, and, and to pull this off, and I'll be honest, the 30000 plus, I think, what is it? Uh, 35000 is, yeah. is not a heavy ask on this watch. Well, I don't, I, I don't recall. Is this an in-house movement or is this a... Per- uh, proprietary movement, but this is basically designed from the bottom up. Oh yeah, no, there's a base. Uh, pr- uh, there's a base movement underneath mm-hmm. that is uh, standard, but the everything else from the from the everything bottom up. once you take that power away and start turning the other discs, that whole mechanism was custom designed yeah. by Jay and working with a Swiss company. I'm not going to get into details. Yep. Sometimes yep. we don't like to give these out. Yep. Uh, you scroll down on the website, you'll also be able to see a picture of Jay at work, uh, <clears throat> and. If oh, you, the case back. Look at that. I mean, that's gorgeous. <clears throat> yes, well. the, you really can't say too much about, I mean, enough about this watch. Right. It's, it's really something that when I have the money, I will have one of these. Oh, here we go. That's There's the, the, the launch edition yeah. and the XP. And you still see the, the oh, God, I hate to use this, DNA yeah. of, the, of his design, the yeah. architecture. Listen, that's, you know. And what he's done well, though, is from the launch watch and the EXP, what he's really done is refined, in this instance, with the Leo, the finishing and the finesse. Took what he learned in those two superb watches, which are far less expensive, mm-hmm. and really made this into just... Hot horology. Uh, just a, a hot horology complication that, you know, if you can afford it, you should buy it. I want one, and um, well done to Jay. Absolutely. All right, so let's talk about an event that you, uh, you brought me uh, to light about. So this is a sneak preview I was happy to receive in my email. I don't like, you know, bragging on me getting to go to these places. I, it's a, it's I a have, perk of the industry. I have to suffer to go to, go to Newport with Elise <laughs> Nardin to see their... They're sponsoring the race around the world, the, um, 
the ocean race it's called it's uh different yacht teams that have uh yachts that can actually lift sailing yachts that can lift partially out of the water hydrofoil if you will racing on a full circuit of the globe ulysse narden is the lead sponsor and in the fifth leg they're going to be in newport rhode island and that's all cool to go out see the people and re, you know reconvene uh, get to shake hands and hugs and all that but they're also launching a new watch which I can't talk about right now. Um, I've been sworn to secrecy, but we will be live streaming uh, on Facebook. I'll be putting YouTube videos and posts Instagram. while I'm up there. That'll be, as you can see, May 19th, 20th. Uh, uh, yeah, 19th, 20th uh, is the event. We'll be up there a day before. I'll get some I may, B roll. I may try to make it up a day or two. You should come up and help with schedule. the. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I know the. I think I was speaking to uh, our guy on our side that um, you guys will be doing some live video on Instagram as well. Some live video, some reels and things like that. So if you don't already, make sure you follow IW Magazine on Facebook, Instagram, um, TikTok? You on TikTok? Yes, Asher likes TikTok, so we yeah. still do some TikTok. Yeah, you, um, do you dance on TikTok? You, you, you know, it? it's it's not my cup of tea, <laughs> but I, I can see why it's, it's it helps get the word out there. But yeah. even with the Uli Snarden here, I'm uh, the total guess. I'm not. Uh, they haven't actually told me what the watch is going to be. Just that it is a new watch. But we all know that they have some beautiful dive watches. They're very concerned with ocean. They sponsor um, the O ship, the O search uh, vessel mm -hmm. for Great White mm -hmm. research and such. So. You're betting a dollar that it might be a, a dive type of watch or marine oriented watch. Kind well, of. if it's you, least not, and it, it technically is somewhat marine oriented. Right. And it's nice to see a brand, again, you talk about Oris going in different design directions and also developing their own movements. Think about Ulysse Snarden, an independent brand owned by the executives recently taken over uh, that has a watch in its uh, stable called the Freak, which exposes the whole mechanism, uses yeah. a dual impulse escapement. And it's an amazing mechanical they, they've device. They've done some bananas. Uh, you know, I think the remember the tr uh, trilogy of time. Oh God, you're old. Oh man, I'm old. But but things that had never been done. So um, well, and I think they haven't taken full advantage. And I'm still waiting for the suspended um, anchor escapement, the yeah. suspended anchor suspendu that they came <laughs> out with. And it's an amazing device. But they've gone quiet with it lately. So let's um, Maybe when, I'm, when I'm up there meeting with them, I will find out what's going on with that because Maybe they have something up their sleeve. I wrote that as my favorite invention of the year when that came out and it's gone quiet, but I think they're probably planning something. All right, right on. So hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, comments, leave them in the description below here on YouTube. You can always email me, uh, John or Gary, Gary at isochronmedia.com. And, uh, Keep, keep it coming, man. Keep watching. Like, yeah, keep, thanks for watching, right? <laughs> uh, like, subscribe, follow. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and we'll talk to you soon.